we've got Zach Grant, Larry Jones, and Brian Santiago from NASA HEDO, that's Human Exploration Development Operations. I've said that so many times already. I'm so excited, I get that every time. NASA HEDO, take it away, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, hey, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, my name's Larry Jones. I work at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, along with Brian Zach. So this shows a map of all the different NASA centers. So here we are up here near New York City, and here's where we work in Huntsville, Alabama. But there's a lot of other NASA centers too, and they all do different things. So what we usually do at Marshall is human exploration, and so figuring out how to have astronauts living in space and getting them there. So that's gonna be mostly what we talk about today. But we do have some of our science friends from JPL and also our friends from Goddard Space Flight Center also here today. This is a really cool picture of the Earth, uh, of the United States uh, from space at night. There were thousands and thousands of people who helped make this uh, achievable over a long period of time. So that was Artemis 1, that was a test flight. Now the next mission is Artemis 2, that's gonna be next year and we're putting four astronauts on it. The previous flight didn't have astronauts. And so this is, this is why we go to space, is to help humans figure out how to live in space, um, how to be able to get to another planet someday and live there. So these are the crew that we're sending on Artemis II, and they're gonna go on a flight around the moon. And uh, what you can see is it has this, this is called the launch abort system. And so when you're flying on the rocket, that's a rocket attached to this one to where if there's a problem, it turns on and rips you away from the other rocket and, and takes the crew back home safely. So that's a cool function. Um, there's also a big heat shield on the bottom and that can take up to thousands of degrees Fahrenheit, up to 5,000 when it's coming back into Earth on the way home. And then you can see once it, once it gets through, then it uh, turns its parachutes on and comes down uh, and lands in the water. And then we send a, 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 a boat to go pick them up. And this, this, uh, this is 150 feet tall, so about half the size of our big rocket that we showed earlier. But one of the funny things is, here's where the crew lives up here, and it's still probably 100 feet down, and so they have a space elevator. You can see the space elevator, and the astronauts have to come all the way up and down on that. Here's a picture of the Starship, the same vehicle here, but then it's stacked on a really big booster at the bottom, and the booster helps launch it up into space. And when it's in this configuration, it's over 400 feet tall. So it's really, really big. And then this is another picture of a lander that we're doing. This one's called the Blue Moon. And we're partnering with another company called Blue Origin. This one's only only uh, 50 feet tall. And so the astronauts can just come up and down on a ladder. So this is a representation for everyone that everything is possible. If you set your mind for that and you work hard, you can get there or to whatever goal you may have. So at best, it will take you nine months to get there. Then you need about three months at Mars to wait for the planets to align between each other so you take the closest path. And then you have another nine months to go back. So that is 21 months at best to get there. And there's a lot of risk of getting there and then having an issue that you will not be able to resolve that far. So the moon really represents that base camp. And specifically, if we have any of our Italian friends out here today, we're working with the Italian space program, OSSI, to develop uh, the multi-purpose hab. This is gonna be the first permanent habitation on the moon uh, for, for anyone in the human race. So this is in development right now. And this will be launching within a few years. So the crew at, at Bastros will be able to live here for seven days on the moon in this small little habitat and allow them to expand their reach of exploration on the moon. Also, what we're working on is longer than seven days. Can they live there for a month, two months, three months at a time? We want to develop that as well. So we have this much larger habitat called the Lunar Surface Hab. It's about the size of a three-bedroom house. So it has much more room for the crew to live and work in. So a crew of four can easily be there for a month or more. And here what we're doing too is having something called a hybrid technology. So you see the bottom half is a metal or a metallic structure, but the top half is more like a balloon. So everyone has their balloon animals out here today, right? Wonderful. So we're going to have those, those big balloon-like structures in outer space as well. If you come by our booth over here, we'll show you all the different layers and technology that is needed to make our inflatable balloon structures work in outer space. 
So also, just going beyond the lunar surface, living on the moon, we want to go to Mars, right? Anyone out here want to go to Mars? Anybody want to go? All right, yeah, let's go together, right? So Ryan said it could be 21 months, and up to three years could be the long end of things. So three years is what we're planning in developing these habitats to be living away from Earth. So you need lots of space, because you guys remember that time of COVID, we were stuck inside and couldn't leave, and we were going a little crazy? Well, we need some bigger spaces. We were stuck inside for three years. We're gonna have a big place for the astronauts to live and move and be around so they don't annoy each other, right? So we have a very big inflatable habitat here to take them to Mars. So here you see that the habitats will launch in a deflated state. And then like the balloon, we, we inflate them. We don't say blow up in space. We inflate them, right? We inflate them big, and they have twice the volume as a normal space station would for the same amount of mass. So here you'll see this animation. We're gonna, we're gonna inflate our inflatable structure here. We're gonna release the launch straps, the restraint straps, and we're gonna start adding the air. It inflates and it gets big, and then when it's fully inflated, it's as hard as a rock. It's just as strong and just as solid as a metal spaceship would be. And we've been flying this technology on the International Space Station now for several years with the beam module and have had no issues with it, so it's, it's a very reliable technology.